Psalm 133 declares this, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It's like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Who's ready to go on a long hike? Any takers? No? Well, too bad. Because we're already going on that hike as we speak. You see, last week we celebrated Easter. The empty tomb, our risen Lord. It was the Super Bowl of the church. And we all joined together in unity to celebrate. We got to see new faces, and we got to see faces we haven't seen in some time. And as one body, we worshiped and praised our God. Yet Easter Sunday did not end on the 31st. You see, Easter is also the start of a journey, a six-week journey that takes us to the ascension of Christ and to ultimately Pentecost. Now, Pentecost doesn't get all the fanfare that Easter does, and it's just not really fair because it's just as incredible. You see, Pentecost is when God comes down, where he comes in the Holy Spirit, filling the apostles, filling us to dwell with us, And it's on that day that the church is born. I mean, that's huge. It means God with us, God in me, God in you. It's God working in us, God working through us to make us shine like a light to the world. Pentecost really is something worth celebrating because without it, we wouldn't be here as the church today. New journeys always start with a bit of excitement. And here's a photo I took of my my mom as we began a journey a few years back to Lake St. Andrews at Mount Rainier National Park. We had just gotten started and uh, we were thrilled to get going because Lake St. Andrews is one of our favorite places in the world. And it was a beautiful day. You could smell the fresh pine in the air. You could hear the rushing waters of the nearby river that flowed along the path. And you could feel the cool air coming up off of it. And as we went, we moved past blooming flowers, stunning groves of birch trees, jaw-dropping panoramas. What a way to get started on a journey. And our scripture for today comes out of a time such as this. You see, Psalm 133 is a psalm of ascent. It's a travel song, if you will. Just after the reign of King David, people would travel all over from Israel to come to Jerusalem to be united as a people to celebrate festivals together and to worship their God. It would have been an exciting journey, and yet for many, the path was long. It takes several days of travel, and some even faced a journey of 100 miles or more. And the roads were not safe either. Bandits, wild animals, they could be behind every rugged and twisted turn of the road. And so it made it all the more important for them to join together in groups and to not get separated from one another. In addition, this wasn't a once a year kind of thing. There were three different festivals that would require pilgrims to make this long journey. The first festival was Pesach, which is what we know as Passover a remembrance of the exodus and the covenant God made with Israel. The second of these festivals was Shavuot, an agricultural festival where they remembered the receiving of the law, the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai. And the last of the festivals was Sukkot, a harvest festival, where the Israelites remembered their time living in huts and wandering in the wilderness. That's a lot of festivals to travel to. That's a lot of miles. For my mom and I, though, the excitement of our new journey began to fade quickly. Yes, it is a beautiful trip, but we faced a total of 25 miles round trip. We began to feel the weight of the pack on our backs. And with every step we took, our feet grew sore. The trail relentlessly winded upward on a steep gradient. And the beautiful panoramas that filled us with such joy were quickly replaced with seemingly endless and dark forests. But on the second day of our journey, as we climbed upward on a ridge, we came across another panorama. 
It's a stunning view. And my first thought on seeing it was, wow. And yet the wow quickly turned into an, oh my. As I realized the terrible truth. You see, I knew where St. Andrew's is. And even if you can't see it in this image, it's back way, 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 way back there behind that stony knob. And in fact, you can almost just make out the waterfall to the left of it between the knob and the plateau. It is a long way. And sometimes our Easter journey can be like this. It may only be the second Sunday of Easter, but perhaps the, walk, the path you walk is a tough one. Perhaps it's rough and winding. On your journey, bad things may happen. Sickness, pain, death, broken hearts, stress, fear, and more. And all of these things can erode the joy of Easter and can make Pentecost seem hardly worth it. It is easy to get tripped up along the way. And don't worry, she was okay. For the record, she was the one who told me to take this picture before helping her up. It kind of reminds me of a childhood game called Snakes and Ladders. Did anyone play this as a kid or maybe played it with your kids? If I can unfold it. There we go. It's a classic children's game, and if you're not familiar with it, you start all the way down there at the bottom, and you have to move all the way up, winding around until you finally reach the top. And along the way, you can see that there are ladders, which help you get boosted up, get closer to the goal, but also snakes, which pull you down further and further away. And there's not been a snake, a game of snakes and ladders I've played that didn't involve at least one snake or one ladder. When bad things happen, they're like those snakes. They drag us down. They drag us further away from the hope and the joy of the victory. But there are also ladders. There are things on our journey in this life that can help us realize and fully live in to the victory. And for the Israelites, the ancient pilgrims on their journey, they found ladders and they're joining together in unity on the road. They found ladders in the songs they sang together and I can attest to the power of a song on the trail. It really does help. And even within these songs, our pilgrims found ladders in reminiscing about the history that God had worked in their lives. For Psalm 133, the ladder within it is the story of Aaron's ordination. Now, Aaron was the brother of Moses. He was the first high priest of Israel. And at the, his ordination, they poured anointing oil over him. And now, this may not be the most interesting story you think to sing about, but there's much more to it to, the, to them. As our psalm continues, this oil is described as being like the dew of Hermon. Now, Mount Hermon was a critical mountain to Israel. The dew that fell on Hermon would come down and bring life to the arid lands below. The dew and the snow of Mount Hermon would flow forth and form the Jordan River which would run all the way through Israel, all the way to the Sea of Galilee, which it helped feed. The dew of Hermon brings life to all of Israel. And it's this dew that they see falling on Zion, falling from God on Jerusalem, where they're headed, even though those two places are separated by 120 miles. They believe God is at work. And snakes and ladders, not all ladders are equal. And for our ancient pilgrims, this song, this anointing oil, it's the big ladder. It's the ladder that carries them all the way from down there, all the way up here. Because you see, this oil was important. Oil was very important in this time. It was used for food, for the lighting of lamps, for the cleaning and purification. It was used for healing. It was used for empowering. It was used to anoint kings, to be leaders of the people. It was used to ordain priests. And for the priests, for Aaron, it set them apart. It made them holy. And through Aaron and the priest, the Israelite people could seek forgiveness. They could seek reconciliation with their God. The oil that our pilgrims sang about was a font of life for them. It's a blessing of God that is poured out on Jerusalem, out from where they're headed, running down the slopes, 
running down the roads, just as the oil ran down Aaron's face, down his beard, down his robes, all the way until it reaches them. On the long path to St. Andrews is St. Andrews Creek. It's in a deep valley right before a long, arduous ascent upward. It just happens to be one of the few and best water sources in the area. And it's here that we fill up our water bottles. It's here that the water from the lake high, high above from our destination flows down and gives us the strength to keep going, to make it up those steep and winding paths. And for us today, as we journey towards Pentecost, the joy and goodness of that celebration have already flowed down to us. The spirit of the Lord is with us. God is with you. No matter what you're facing, God is right there with you in the middle of it. The church is already here too. This body under the leadership, under the headship of Christ is where we can come and be united as one people. And in this body, we have each other as well to walk with, to guide us and to help us up when we fall. It is important that we cherish this body, that we engage in it, that we allow ourselves to be vulnerable to it, that we ask for the help that we need when we need it. This is, after all, a journey that we are all on together. And we don't want anyone to fall behind. Together, we can push forward. Together, we can sing together. And together, we can reach the end of the journey. We did make it to St. Andrews that year. It's cool and refreshing waters were life-giving. It was well worth the journey. Yet despite all that hard work to get there, we could only stay for a couple hours. The journey had to continue. Even though Easter officially ends with Pentecost, and, only, and even though we only celebrate Pentecost once for one Sunday, the joy, the hope, the call to share the good news, the call to love and to serve, the filling of the Holy Spirit and the united body of the church continue on. The journey continues. And that can sound a little scary at first. After all, there are a lot of snakes along the path. But it's okay. Because on this journey, we're not alone. We walk with one another. We walk with God. On this journey, there are ladders as well. And so today, I'd like to extend a ladder to you. A ladder of anointing to help you along this journey. Just as the anointing oil was so important to those ancient pilgrims who sang our psalm, so can it be for us as well. As Christians, we use anointing oil to anoint the sick and the hurting as laid out in the book of James. Now, it's not a magical healing aid. It doesn't replace medicine, but it's the work of God that God does in cooperation with those things. It can be healing for something physical, but it can also be healing for someone who's struggling with emotional or spiritual issues, for those dealing with sickness, hardships, or grief. It can bring wholeness. It can bring peace. Yet the anointing oil can also be used as a source of empowerment. As Christians, we are all priests. We all have a ministry given to us in this life. Now, that may not mean that we're all called to ordain ministry, but in, the, in the, our lives, in our ministry, we are called to testify with our words, our service, and action wherever we are and whatever we do. So today I will invite you all to receive the anointing for oil, of oil for healing, for empowerment, for strength, for the journey ahead, for whatever you may need. You'll be able to receive this anointing oil at the end of our service after our invitation is finished and during our final song and beyond, I'll be up here at the front uh, to offer you that anointing oil. And you'll be having your choice to, uh, to kneel or to stand as you feel led. And don't worry, it won't be poured out on you like Aaron. Uh, it'll be given to you in the form of a cross, either on your forehead or on the back of your hand, your choice. My friends, let us not lose hope or our joy of Easter, of our risen Lord, but let us live into it fully. Let us look forward to the joy of Pentecost, that God is with us and that the church is here for us. Let us go together arm in arm on this journey. Let us strengthen one another. Let us be open to one another. Let us share our struggles and our pains. Let us be willing to serve and lift up one another. 
Let's be a united people who will not stand to allow the things of this world to divide us. Let's lead others into this unity through love and mentorship by discipling. Let's be the priest that we are called to be, to go out and spread the good news of what God has done, to sing it loudly as we walk the roads we travel. Let us be like those early pilgrims who sang. Let the precious oil run over us as we remember what God has done, what God is doing, what God will do. For it is in these things through our good and loving God that we are able to ascend the slopes, that we are able to make it to the end, that through whom we find life evermore. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of health and salvation, we give you thanks that you join us on our journey. And we thank you, Lord, for this gift of oil. As your holy apostles appointed many who were sick and healed them, so pour out your Holy Spirit on this gift, that those who in faith receive this anointing at the end of the service may be made whole, may be strengthened, and may be empowered through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.